Have you ever had a conversation with someone where you walked away feeling as if something wasn't right? Maybe you felt like the other person had tried to throw a dig out to you or make a passive aggressive comment, yet in the moment when it happened, it was hard to recognize. Maybe there's someone in your life who you know engages in manipulative communication tactics or tries to manipulate your emotions to obtain a desired result that they want to see happen. When engaging with someone who is highly manipulative, it can be difficult to know how to navigate those situations and really manage it in a way that feels good for the person who is receiving the manipulation. Today, I'm providing a general overview of different ways to navigate manipulation tactics. Stay tuned, I'm about to break it all down. welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you're returning. Either way, I'm always happy that you're here. I'm Rachel Ann. I'm a licensed professional counselor and I make videos of psychological commentary on current events, anti-scam, and I have a particular interest in domestic violence awareness and talking about high control cultic groups. Before I get into this video today, I want to give a very quick disclaimer. This video is for educational purposes only. It is not intended to diagnose or treat or be a replacement for individualized therapeutic care. Many of the suggestions I'm going to talk about today are very general in nature, and it is always so important to get plugged in with an individual therapist or even a therapy group support group to receive that individualized feedback. This video is going to cover several different aspects of navigating manipulative tactics. There will be certain tried and true, more concrete tactics, but then I am the kind of person I like to get to the root cause of things. And so I also wanna offer some generalized bits of information to help you almost as a whole in navigating manipulative behaviors from others. Manipulation often falls on a complete spectrum and really anyone can engage in manipulation from time to time, but I've noticed that manipulation tactics and behaviors can be particularly difficult to deal with if it is someone who you must have ongoing interactions with. Maybe this is an in-law or a sibling of yours or someone who you work for, so even a boss. This is where manipulation can become very draining. It can feel really heavy to a person or a person may even become almost desensitized to the manipulation and then it's only when they walk away that they realize, wow, that was an extremely manipulative situation or I feel really bad about myself after interacting with that other person. One of the first principles in navigating manipulative behaviors in language is to really fully recognize, understand, and know that you can't change someone else who doesn't acknowledge that they're doing anything wrong or someone else who doesn't want to change. And this is very important because unless someone is willing to take accountability for their behavior and make active steps to change, oftentimes they'll continue on with the same behaviors. The second generalized bit of information is to really know that, and this is honestly to live in the world that we live in, but a key tenant in really protecting a person from manipulation tactics is to have a good sense of who you are as a person. This means having a really strong internal sense of self, knowing your intentions. Why are you making the decisions that you are making? Because, and I like to think of the example, let's say that you have a family gathering where you don't want to go. It's typically an unhealthy gathering. People end up fighting. It's very stressful. It's very anxiety provoking for you. And so this year you decide to set a boundary and tell, let's say it's your mom, I'm not going to be at this event and your mom comes back at you. Why would you do this to me? You're such a selfish daughter or a son and how could you not come to this gathering? I really want you to see everyone. Why do you treat me so badly? In this situation, it is so much more helpful to come from a place when you set a boundary of knowing what your intention is. If you know through and through that it's not a malicious intention of you 
to not go to this gathering or insert whatever may be going on, then you can always lean back on that. Knowing the intention that you have behind the decisions that you are making also helps to build a more concrete foundation of then being able to stay resolute in whatever decision it is that you're making. This bit of generalized information is being given, especially in the context of abusive and or manipulative relationships. I am all for introspection and receiving feedback from others who we trust and have healthy relationships with, but when somebody is attempting to manipulate another person, they will often throw out all kinds of arbitrary accusations and even make negative statements about the other person's character to achieve what they want to see happen. If there is not a solid internal sense of self and someone gives you that feedback like, oh, you are just such a selfish partner or daughter, son, etc., then this can immediately cause a person to go into second guessing themselves and really thinking, okay, well, maybe I am selfish. I'll just put my needs aside and go to the event or do the favor for this other person anyways. The third piece of this really, I would say, generalized bird's eye view of dealing with manipulation is to see the behaviors for what they are. Can being manipulative be extremely hurtful and emotionally painful? Absolutely. But if a person can see through the emotional side of things in a way and kind of logically view that situation and recognize, okay, they're calling me selfish because I'm not going to go to this event, then a person is able to not take it as personally, which then can guide their next step in what they do in that relationship. Having someone say something negative about you can feel really badly, but if you're able to zoom out and reflect on that and really question yourself, is this actually even about me or is the other person trying to just hurt my feelings or get what they want out of the situation? This is also very much where having a really intact sense of self can come in handy because if you have that core knowledge of who you are and your level of kindness to other people, as well as examining your intention, when someone else tries to arbitrarily accuse you of something or manipulate you into feeling bad, you can always go back and self-examine, question yourself, really check your true intentions, as well as try to understand where that other person might be coming from and what they're trying to achieve. This is all the more important to really understand and then allow for you to make a decision. Do I continue to have a relationship with this person or has it gotten to a place where it's just consistently unhealthy? So first and foremost, when I talk about dealing with manipulative behaviors, we've got to establish a sense of safety. I am a firm believer that it's very difficult to heal in the place that is injuring you. So if you're in some kind of relationship, this is platonic, familial, just romantic partnership, where that person continues to manipulate time and time again, or say things that are hurtful, it can make it much more difficult to be able to zoom out and really regain perspective. It's not impossible, but it, it just can sometimes make it very difficult. If you are in a situation where you're in a, this relationship currently, then making sure that you're safe when you even go through and try to exercise setting boundaries and things like that is going to be also vitally important. So safety can look like physical safety, emotional safety. We can achieve physical safety by making sure that we're safe in our homes. And if you're not feeling safe in your home, then potentially considering staying with a friend, a family member. But then the other side of that coin is an emotional sense of safety. Emotional safety can really be built when we have a strong support network in place. 
if you feel like you don't have many friends or you don't have many supportive family members that you can go to after trying to set healthy boundaries or confront manipulative behavior or deal with manipulation, this is where potentially joining a free support group in the community or starting individual therapy where you have an outlet and you have a person or a group of people to be able to lean back on and talk to. Having a really solid group of friends or even just one family member that you can go to and kind of debrief certain things with can be a great way for them to remind you of who you are. When someone is trying to manipulate you, oftentimes they'll say and give all kinds of feedback that is negative about your character. Yet if you have this other person to remind you of what your true character is because they know you intimately, or you really have developed the ability to remind yourself of who you are and recognize that your intentions are good and you're not meaning to hurt anyone else, this can create that sense of external safety through having a group of friends or just one other person to remind you or that internal sense of safety which is always beneficial in terms of reminding yourself of your worth of your intentions in that situation and who you really are as a person so the establishment of safety is paramount for ongoing healing and that sense of overall security to persist when we feel safe, we're often able to establish healthy routines, take care of ourselves, get good sleep, which in turn can automatically create a sense of emotional safety that can then be built upon and our self-confidence can increase. But if we're in a dynamic where somebody is potentially picking fights and keeping you up all night, then it's very easy to lose track of the manipulation that's going on because a person is just in it. And when you're in something, it's sometimes hard to see really what is going on in that situation. The second piece of dealing with manipulation, and this one sounds very common sense, but it is common sense, and that is to recognize is manipulation going on sometimes people can go into a resistance to admitting that a family member is manipulative or a romantic partner is manipulative and this could be a form of self-protection somebody doesn't want to admit to themselves that those passive aggressive comments or those hurtful things that someone is saying are being done in an effort to control them or manipulate the victim survivor into doing what it is that the manipulative person wants them to do. So understanding and recognizing what is manipulation, how does this happen, how does it come about, what are the signs? I did make a video not too long ago about different signs of manipulation, so I'll make sure to include that in the description below. But oh, there are so many resources out there talking about signs of manipulation and how they manifest themselves. Once you recognize that manipulation is in fact going on, probably one of the most important steps is not taking the bait. When you recognize that the person is trying to say something to you to elicit a desired response, it's twofold. It's remaining neutral in your affect, but then it's also choosing not to be baited into defending yourself for some arbitrary accusation that that other person is putting off on you. Again, this is in the context of relationships where there are heavy levels of established manipulation occurring. This is not being said in an effort to encourage a person from not taking accountability for their behaviors, but just in the context of manipulative relationships where the other person is accusing you of doing something that is just false or wrong. And it goes back to them doing that in an effort to achieve what they want to see happen. And instead to meet it with calmness and even seeking understanding, asking that person, what's causing you to say this right now? And really asking questions, following up, if you choose to engage, there's always the strategy of ending the relationship and deciding that it's no longer healthy for you to entertain that person 
due to the manipulation that's going on. If this is someone who is a family member that is going to have to be in your life, then it can be that gentle, non-combative, non-emotionally reactive confrontation. I say non-emotionally reactive confrontation because when someone is attempting to manipulate another person, once they see that they have achieved or been able to elicit an emotional response, that's their hot button that they are going to probably keep pressing. That is almost in their mind the ticket to thinking that's it. That's what gets under their skin. So now I know what can upset this other person. This can either be intentional, unintentional. The person who's engaging in manipulation, the behaviors may be so deeply ingrained in who they are and in their communication strategies that they may just automatically, almost reflexively recognize that they're inciting an emotional response and then cling on to that emotional response and use it for their own ill intent. One of the reasons why I am a big advocate in staying neutral in these situations, which I know can be really hard, especially when you are face to face with somebody who is really saying unkind things or manipulative statements to you to try to elicit a response from you. But one of the reasons why this is vitally important is because we all have mirror neurons. Mirror neurons activate when we are face-to-face -face with another person, particularly someone who we know fairly well. And if someone is becoming escalated in their tone of voice and how loud they are being, then it can be a natural human inclination to mirror that person and then match them where they are at. Whereas sometimes a great de-escalation tool can be to stay calm in the midst of someone continuing to get heightened. However, I do just want to reiterate that establishing a sense of safety is always of utmost priority in any situation that could eventually be physically abusive or even emotionally abusive and removing yourself from that situation may be the best option. This discussion on mirror neurons is also not meant to place responsibility on the survivor for de-escalating the situation, but just to point out how in everyday interactions with other people, mirror neurons can activate and this occurs in the workplace, in friendships, relationships. So just being aware that if someone is becoming reactive, that it can incite that natural reaction to also become reactive. This also goes into not providing that emotional reaction to the other person. If you're not reacting and you're not giving someone else anything to cling on to or really go off of, then you've effectively been able to most likely and hopefully de-escalate the situation. I've seen this play out one of two ways, if I'm being honest. Sometimes it is very effective in de-escalation, but then sometimes the other person may go in stronger and harder in terms of saying things and doing things to try to elicit that response. If you notice that despite you remaining calm and in control of yourself, that the other person continues to pick and press forward, then this is where in many situations, it's really effective to just put distance between you and that person. Go to a different room. Maybe it's time for you to leave to go to work. So you go to work. And even if the person is saying, don't ever leave the house angry, it's a matter of having to recognize that this is not any longer an effective conversation. This is not productive. We're not getting anywhere here and making the choice to then create that, that space in that moment. Also when dealing with someone engaging in manipulative behaviors, setting a healthy boundaries will always be one of your best allies that you can utilize. This could look like having a verbal conversation and letting someone know if you start screaming at me or cursing at me, I am going to remove myself from the situation. I do not want to put myself in a place where I'm being spoken to in that way. If the person who you are enforcing boundaries with is someone who 
again, you have to communicate with, maybe this is even a co-parenting situation or this is a boss. This is where having a third party present is also going to be at very advantageous. Not as someone who is also going to chime in and you know, engage in an emotional reaction towards that person, but just someone who can be present, quietly observing, just almost as that presence, that calming presence in the situation. I always like to think about parents who are co-parenting. Maybe your parent, the other parent who you are co-parenting with has some volatile, even hostile language patterns. This is where keeping communication as much as you can to texting or even emailing can be very effective so that in that moment, a person is not taken off guard. One of the difficult pieces about dealing with someone who is verbally aggressive or manipulative in nature is that some people are really great at being in that moment, responding very quickly on the spot, Maybe they're a very fast verbal processor, whereas other people have the style where they instantly either withdraw or potentially freeze and shut down at receiving that communication. And it's hard for them to really formulate what it is that they want to say. So keeping contact with someone who you must be in contact with to texting or emailing can allow for that distance between you and the other person so that your central nervous system can kind of calm itself, that you're not in that fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response that often occurs when a person perceives a threat. Last but not least, this communication strategy I'm about to discuss is one that is most applicable in situations where there is the absence of any kind of physical, verbal, or emotional abuse. This particular strategy can be helpful in everyday communication with others. There is always the skill of reflective listening, which even if it's not a conversation where manipulation is occurring, in my opinion, engaging in reflective listening can be a vital way to strengthen communication, but it also has a secondary benefit when in communication and having a hard conversation with someone in that you're paraphrasing, reflecting back to that person what you're hearing, which then causes them to hear what it is that they just said. It also allows your brain a second to process what is being said and can give space in that moment. So someone may be sitting across from you, and I'm gonna go with this example of you deciding not to attend a family gathering. So maybe it's a parent and they're saying, you never wanna do what we want you to do. You're always busy, you're always working, and you come up with all these excuses, insert whatever. And the reflective response that a person could say is, so I'm hearing that you think I don't have time for you. And it causes that other person to kind of sit for a second and reflect, and then you can move forward in the conversation. Can you tell me some other times that you felt I maybe was not present, or could you? Could we talk about what we would like to see happen in our relationship? I've noticed that this form of reflective listening can be effective in just slowing the conversation down and also helping that other person feel heard. Using active listening can also be a way of almost inadvertently non-combatively calling out unintentional manipulation or even maladaptive forms of communication from someone who you love, such as passive aggressive communication. Again, this is not necessarily being applied to relationships where there is abusive behavior and language occurring, but instead the relationships where maybe the other person struggles with communicating their needs, other than that, though, it is a healthy relationship that you would like to continue. A lot of times it's because they haven't learned how to assertively express themselves. And so in how they express their needs can come out in ineffective or unhealthy ways. So if you can cut through 
those maladaptive communication skills and just say, I'm hearing that you feel I'm not present enough for you. It can sometimes provide that languaging. This honestly can be a big ask for the person who's having to do the reflective listening. I recognize that. At a certain point, you do have to stop and ask yourself, how much work do I want to put into this relationship? Is the other person willing to make healthy changes? Or even if they are manipulative and it's not a nefarious, ill, unhealthy intent, is this too emotionally draining for me? It just kind of goes into having that high internal sense of self and recognizing within how much you're willing to take on from another person or how much reflective listening you want to do or diffusing of the situation or is it at the point where the relationship is so unhealthy or it feels so draining to you that it's no longer a healthy piece of your life. When possible, it is important to prepare for potentially hard conversations as much as you can in advance. Now, I know that this may sound strange, especially if you're talking to a family member who you've known your whole life or your significant other who you've been with for 10, 15 years. But in these situations where you're recognizing that manipulation is occurring, it is vitally important to have a plan of action on what information you need to get across to that person. Also to have reminders for yourself to not take the bait, to not escalate when that person escalates, so to speak. Last but not least, don't forget to use your I statements. Own what it is that you are trying to say. Be assertive in your communication because even if somebody who is manipulative observes that weakness in another person, they can use that to their own advantage and really play into how compassionate someone else is. And it's so important to know that your feelings are so valid and it matters how you want to move through and within a relationship of any kind. At the end of the day, the choice has to always be up to you in knowing when is enough enough and it's okay for you to express yourself in a healthy relationship. There is always going to be constructive feedback and criticism. And when a partner has that healthy sense of self to know that just because their partner maybe gently calls them out on some behavior that they would like to see changed, it doesn't mean that they as a whole are the worst person ever or they don't go into those deflective statements or try to absolve themselves of any responsibility. In a healthy relationship, it's very reciprocal. Each person in that relationship is able to bring concerns to the other person and they take ownership. There are sorries that are said and there are attempts to do better. Everyone deserves that kind of romantic relationship and even family relationship. I am of the belief, and I know not everybody agrees with me, but even if someone is your family member, if it is an abusive, toxic, or unhealthy relational dynamic that continues to create internal dread, terror, trauma within a person, these are oftentimes good indications that boundaries need to be put in place, distance, or even making that decision at what point do I need to remove myself from this relational dynamic. This is just really to me feels like the tip of the iceberg when it comes to dealing with individuals who engage in manipulation, but I hope that these are helpful for you and I hope that you were able to get some great information. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy a previous playlist I've done all on different manipulative tactics, gaslighting, even some psychological commentary I'd previously done on how cultic groups form because they are experts at manipulation as always. Thank you so much for watching. Take really good care of yourself and be well.